kitchen. So kitchen witchery, hearth magic, kitchen magic, however you want to describe it as. It's for the letter K in the YouTube Pagan Challenge. This is the first thing that I thought of. And off the bat, I do have three book recom recommendations. I already made reviews on them, so you can find them on my channel. Yeah, but I'll likely link them down below as well. So, first one is Celtic Folk Folklore, Folklore Cooking by Joanne Asia. And, like, you got different types of recipes and they're categorized into different sections. Soups and stews, milk, eggs, and cheese breads, porridges, and breakfast foods, and information, quotes, and stuff. So, some information. So, goes into, but anyway, there's this one. There is a Kitchen Witch's Cookbook by Patricia Telsko. And so <coughs> she does have like an introduction. She's finding Something. The difficult part about explaining kitchen witchery to others is that there is no precise way in which to approach it. There are no spells or rituals carved in stone to follow. The best any book can offer is a variety of suggestions from which you can build your own version of pantry magic. Like working with an uh, erector set, each person's magical foundation and edifice will be unique as the individual. Each person person's approach to every part of the cooking process will be will change to reflect their marvelous diversity. So, and so there's this one, and then you got this honkin thing, the hearth, which is Compodium, Magical and Natural Living for Every Day by Anna Franklin. So, this is more, you got things like 17th century ba bath bag, energizing bath bag, blackberry vinegar, pickled cucumber, all sorts of stuff in this one. Moisturizers, clean masks, different kinds of stuff. And Like food ethics, uh, concerned pagans have to consider the ethics of their food choices, choices which have an impact on health, environment, and animal welfare. Most pagans say that the code they live by is in, in a harm none, do what you will. Not every pagan follows that, but like she said, most. So, and you got, so you have this one. I oh, just remembered I have you do have why well, I'm showing these at the same time they're pretty much the same thing one has a few more stuff in it not <laughs> it's odd for me to with an informational ball book to have like very little posts in it like but anyway old book smell so you have the wicca herbal recipes magic and abundance by jamie wood so it's 
So you got different things like, I don't think I've done a review on this. So Cypress and you got a few different recipes, Dragon's Blood, Evening Promos, Fennel. So you got like one or two recipes for each thing and then you got like those kind of imageries. You got a few different kinds of imagery in here. And then the Wicca cookbook. So they're almost like kind of companion. I had another version of this, but I kept this version. I edition. I had a previous edition. I think my I know somebody took it before I was able to put it, give it to donation, but you do have, no, this one is where this was more herbs, this one's actual, this one goes by Sabbath, and you got similar imagery in this one, and berry, honey, and hazelnut crumble, so this one goes into the cookbook, like, cooking, and more, like, it's like, it's a cross between, like, Wicca and medieval cooking, because it does go by the Sabbaths, and it does talk about medieval cooking before it gets into it. The cookbook so there's two other ones for you but some other information other than those book book recommendations there's like there there's versatile forms of ma like magic and can be incorporated into kitchen kitchen magic can be very versatile and can be incorporated into many different paths and can be a path on its own. So there, the list can go on, but some aspects of kitchen magic can be magical cooking, completing household chores, honoring the goddess, keeping a kitchen altar or goddess shrine that relates to like kitchen or cooking or the or the home and hearth and creating a garden but there's oh there can be a lot of other things that can be added on to that so there are some kitchen witches that generally don't have formal structure as they're like would be more like I would say more solitary than say in a coven or work or working with multiple people but to me I think more working with people would be say your family so solitary or with family then say hey working with a coven and then like rotating to somebody else's kitchen or whatever but going to somebody else's kitchen could be very personal so there's that Cooking and other forms of magic like candles, herbal divination, moon magic can also be incorporated in kitchen magic. <coughs> and many and an aspect of kitchen witchery can be working with the seasons, like growing your own food, buying seasonally and or locally which often goes with seasonal pro like seasonal items and magic would not can go more than making the food preparing the kitchen cleaning it so 
So it's not all about the food and the prep of it. Like other creations like um, candles, sachets, uh, DIYs, beauty products, and so on. And you could keep your own kitchen book of shadows, but you could also call it your cookbook with like little notes in the margin, margins, margins. So, like little memories or little notes or something. But you can also, but if you want, you can make your own kitchen book of shadows and have like a page of like memories attached to the recipe or whatever. So things you could do that could like relate to a kitchen magic or hearth magic or whatever is like paint symbols of your tradition on like a trivet read up on feng, feng shui and how like it could bring that into the kitchen to make it more suitable for you but to me i'm not one for feng, feng shui so some people would be like keeping it, your kitchen clean and organized, have like herbs readily available. So moving clockwise would, if you move clockwise, you would invoke something and Moving counterclockwise would banish anything, so stirring food one way or the other. You can have some sort of influence. So, again, creating a kitchen altar or a sacred space. So it doesn't have to be huge, it could be just one little corner. So keeping it clean of anything negative or stagnant energy from building up. So wiping down surfaces and organized, keeping everything ready, available, not just herbs. So, and so not have anything like too cluttered, just like say, have every, like have things piling up the sinks in the sink, wash the dishes, or if you prefer doing a dishwasher, doing a load in the dishwasher, do that, but you can have a more, like, you may have more of a connection if you clean the dishes yourself. So, hanging wind chimes to ward off and disperse negative, negative energy as well. So, using natural materials in your tools and other supplies. So whether it's spoons, knives, not knives, but like bamboo utensils or whatever, that that's an idea. So me like stuff from glass, wood, metal items are also suitable. So Magical herbs can be kept around the kitchen, sewn in pouches, or hung and, or placed on surfaces. So, but they can also be sewn in the hems of curtains and or tablecloths. And and you can have their fragrance in that space. So how you feel you want. You could do one of those things. So, yeah. Just a little bit of information about kitchen witchery, kitchen magic, hearth magic. So, yeah. Kitchen for the Tube Pagan Challenge 2018. Happy readings.